Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are talking about antithrombin-3 and heparin. Okay, so we've now discussed what a glycosaminoglycan is. A glycosaminoglycan is a polysaccharide which is made up by polymerizing uh, disaccharides together, and we've discussed uh, the structure of the six main disaccharides which you use to make a polysaccharide. Okay, so now you can make different glycosaminoglycans by using different fractions of each of these uh, disaccharides within your polysaccharide. So if you want to make uh, the dice, uh, sorry, if you want to make the glycosaminoglycan heparan sulfate, then what you do is you mainly use one uh, of these disaccharides, okay? So I'll show you which is the main disaccharide which you use in heparan sulfate. Okay, so the main disaccharide you use in heparan sulfate is this one here. So this is the master of heparan sulfate. Glucuronic acid bound to uh, N-acetylglucosamine. That is used over and over and over again in heparan sulfate. Now, the other glycosaminoglycan that we've discussed, heparin, and after which this video is named, is also a glycosaminoglycan. And now we're in the, the ability, we have the knowledge to understand how heparin is different from heparan sulfate. Heparin is again a glycosaminoglycan, however the major disaccharide that you use in heparin is this uh, 2-O sulfated hydronic acid with this um, 6-O sulfated N-sulfated glucosamine, okay? So this disaccharide is hugely used in heparin and the first disaccharide where you have uh, glucuronic acid with um, N-acetylglucosamine is hugely used in heparan sulfate. So they're both very similar structure but different disaccharides are making them up, basically. The um, favoured disaccharide in the glycosaminoglycan is different, and that's how these two molecules are different. Now, they are both endogenously found polysaccharides. So in your body, you will have both heparan sulfate and heparin. They're located in different places, however. Heparan sulfate is found on the surface of endothelial cells, okay? So if we draw our endothelial cells lining the blood vessel here, then on the surface of these endothelial cells, you'll have these great big polymers, which are glycosaminoglycans, and they are heparan sulfate glycosaminoglycans. So all over the surface of the endothelial cells, you will have this heparan sulfate, okay? Now, Antithrombin-3, as it's created in the liver, is not active. However, it's being chucked into the bloodstream, and when it binds to heparan sulfate on the surface of the endothelial cells, okay, so this is antithrombin-3, or AT3 for short, binding to the surface of these endothelial cells, it then becomes active, and it will then inactivate, uh, so let's go through this list again, it will inactivate thrombin Okay, thrombin is one of its main targets, which remember the old name for which is 2A. And then it will also inactivate 9A, okay, 10A, uh, 11A, and 12A. So all of the components of the coagulation cascade. And thereby it is stopping the process of coagulation. It is stopping. Um, fibrinogen being converted into fibrin strands, and therefore it's stopping the production of the fibrin web, which uh, intertwines between the platelets and holds, holds those um, um, thromboses um, together. Okay, so it's stopping thrombosis from occurring, basically. Right, uh, now, if we want to stop thrombosis from occurring, therefore. If we've got someone who's struggling with thrombotic disease, so thromboses are forming within their blood vessels, how can we stop it from occurring? Well, heparin is also capable of binding to antithrombin-3 and activating it. Now, you do not find heparin uh, on the surface of endothelial cells, but we can give it to someone, and it will go into the bloodstream. So here comes this heparin 
uh, polysaccharide, okay, and it will bind to the antithrombin free. So this is heparin now, and it will bind to antithrombin free here. And what will happen is that it will activate the antithrombin free, and then you'll have a greater activation of antithrombin free. And again, antithrombin free will inactivate all of these free. So if we have someone who is suffering with thrombotic disease, who is at high risk of having a stroke or an MI, then we often put them on heparin uh, to um, activate their endogenous antithrombin free, which is being produced by the liver, and get it to destroy uh, or inactivate the thrombin, the 9A, the 10A, the 11A, and the 12A. And that can stop uh, the um, fibrinogen in the blood being turned into fibrin strands. And if you stop the formation of fibrin strands, then you stop the formation of the fibrin meshwork, which is held holding the aggregated platelets together. And the links between the platelets um, are very weak, basically. The main um, support for the platelets remaining stuck together in a thrombus is that you have this fibrin meshwork. And if you stop the fibrin meshwork, then all that's holding the platelet aggregate together anymore is the uh, bonds between the platelets, and those are quite weak. So this is a very powerful anti-thrombotic therapy, basically.